Now it's time to set up the scenes, and the scene is what can be seen during your live stream. And right now, we don't really have anything. We just have a big blank void here. There's nothing that'll be shown during our live stream. So we have to put stuff here. We have to put the screen that we want to share. We have to put the text that we want to have on the screen during the live stream. We have to place in our webcam somewhere. So down here in the bottom left, you have the scenes palette and you can add multiple scenes. So you could switch between a scene that has your screen that you're drawing on and then you could have a second scene that's your webcam full screen and so on. And you can switch between those scenes on the fly while you're live streaming. Next to scenes, you have sources. And sources are the individual pieces of content or the elements that make up your scene. So within my scene, one of my sources could be my screen capture, Another source could be my webcam, and another source could be my logo. So let's go ahead and create a new scene by clicking on the plus icon. And I'm going to call this art stream. That's going to be the name of this scene. We'll need to add some sources to our art stream. So let's click on the plus icon. And we can choose from a number of elements. You can add an image to the screen. You can add media like video, audio, and animation. You can add text to your scene. You can capture a display or a monitor. You can capture a window or part of a window. You can capture a game. You can capture video from a video capture device. You can capture audio from your audio input, or you can capture your audio output. So let's go ahead and start with display capture. That would probably be the most common source that you'd want to add. We can go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to capture my Cintiq. So I'm going to type in Cintiq for the title and click OK. And then all of a sudden we're getting this weird tunneling into infinity effect. And what this is doing is this is showing you the screen, capturing the screen, capturing the screen, capturing the screen on into infinity. This is called a feedback loop. So this is why it's good to have more than one screen. And if this is getting really confusing for you and you don't like seeing this feedback loop, you can right click on your screen and you can uncheck enable preview. So now it's not gonna show you that preview anymore. You can also right click on it again and choose enable preview. If you want to edit a source, you can click on the gear or you can double click on the source. I'm going to click down here on display and I can switch between my multiple monitors. Display zero would be my Cintiq. I could also switch it to my other display, which is showing Corel Painter. I'm going to go ahead and leave this on this display. Normally, if I were doing a live stream, I'd want to set this to my Cintiq because that's the display that I'd be drawing on. But because I'm recording this video on my Cintiq, I actually have to set it to my other screen for demonstration purposes. So this is the screen that I'm going to share. I want to share the entire screen. I'll click on OK. Now this works for sharing an entire screen, but what if you just want to share part of the screen? You can do a couple different things. In our composition preview up here, you can see that I have this red box surrounding the screen capture that I just added as an element. And I can drag the corners of this to resize it. I can move it around if I want to reposition it. And I can hold Alt and I can drag to crop it. So let's say maybe I want to crop off this extra stuff up here. I can do that. And then I can take it and I can move it up to the top. And then I have some room down here at the bottom if I wanted to add my website or my logo or something like that. There may be some cases where your content is getting cut off and you may need to go ahead and reposition it. For example, my layers palette is getting a little bit cut off near the bottom here. So what I'd want to do is go to my screen that I'm capturing and maybe condense things down a little bit, shrink that down. And then now I can see the bottom of the layers palette. So you may need to move these windows around a little bit within your capture. The other way to capture just part of a window is to add a source and then choose window capture rather than display capture. I'll go ahead and just call this a window. And then what it's capturing now is the window that I have selected, which is my Camtasia recorder, which I'm using to record right now. But you could choose anything else that's currently open. I'll go ahead and click OK. And then now that's a separate element that I can take and I can move into my composition. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. I can crop it and so on. Now, if I don't want this in my scene anymore, I'll just click the minus to remove it from the scene. Let's add some more sources to our scene. I'm gonna click on the plus and I'm gonna try an image. I'm gonna call this overlay. Now we'll wanna to browse to locate the image. I have some images that I created earlier. You'll wanna keep in mind that we know our composition is 1920 by 1080 pixels. So any content that we create for our live stream needs to be that size as well. So you could, for example, make a canvas in Photoshop, put in all of your graphics there, and then just export them one by one at the appropriate size. You can add all kinds of file formats here. 
So I have this overlay that I'm going to add. I'm gonna click on open. That's added in my content. I'm gonna click on okay. And then I can take this and I can move it around. Now, because of the way I set this up, I made this a canvas that was 1920 by 1080, but I could also just put in this one little graphic here. I just found that it was easier to position things if I did it this way. But if I wanted to make this bigger or smaller, I could do that. I could scale it up a little bit so that it fits right along the bottom of my video and everything is all matched up. You can see some examples of what you would do with these image overlays. You could have your logo or your website or your Facebook and Patreon and YouTube addresses and everything like that. That way when people watch the live stream, they have an idea of who they're watching and it'll help answer some commonly asked questions because during your live streams, people will ask you who you are, how do they find your videos, what tablet you're using, what software you're using. So if you can put all that on the screen, it's easier just to point to it and say, you can go to my website down here, aaronrutten.com. Let's go ahead and add another source. Let's add a webcam. I'm going to choose video capture device. I'm gonna call this webcam. And now you can see me on the webcam. So you wanna make sure that your webcam is selected here. You can configure the video, which I would recommend because that'll give you a few more options. For example, I can zoom in if I wanna crop in on my head tighter. I can move the camera up and down, left and right. I have a few options on this particular camera to focus on my face. I can also adjust the focus manually. I can go to advanced settings and I can play with automatic lighting adjustments or I can lighten and darken this myself. I can make it brighter if I need to make it brighter or darker if I need to make it darker. You also might wanna flip the view of yourself by clicking on mirrored. That way you're kind of looking in a mirror and it makes it easier and you don't have to try to remember that everything's backwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save if I'm happy with these settings. Let's go ahead and click on okay. And just like anything else, we can reposition our webcam and move it somewhere where we want it. I'll put it down here. I can hold alt and I can crop it down if I want it to be a bit tighter. Reposition it, maybe make it a bit bigger. You can also use the arrow keys to move it up and down by nudging it. Now you may get into some situations where things overlap each other and something disappears or you can't grab a particular object that you wanna grab. Like right now I'm trying to click on the webcam, but it's only grabbing the background. So what I wanna do is select this image overlay, which is kind of interfering with everything. And I wanna right click on it. I wanna choose order, move to bottom. That's going to move it down to the bottom of the order of everything else. That way it's not on top of anything. And then now the webcam is on top of or in front of that overlay. So for instance, I could take the webcam and right click on it and I could go to order, move to bottom. And all of a sudden you can't see it anymore because now the webcam is behind. If I right click on it again and I go to order, move to top, now it's in front. So that's one particular scene. Let's just really quickly set up a second scene. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plus button. I'll call this full screen. Let's go ahead and add a source. I'm gonna add a video capture device. I'm gonna add the existing webcam. I'm gonna make that bigger. And then if I wanted to, I could add the Cintiq. Maybe move that up here. And then this could be my second scene. So while I'm recording the live stream, I could turn it on like this, introduce myself, be full screen. And then when I wanna show more of the screen that I'm painting on, I click on art stream and I switch to that scene and it does this nice fade between them. So I could be drawing, doing my thing. And then if I wanna talk again and talk into the camera and have my head be bigger, I click back on full screen and there I am full screen. Another idea for scene is you could have a title screen that fades away as your live stream starts. So this is a really cool feature. And again, I just wanna mention that you can go up here to scene collection and you can create collections of scenes. So for instance, I could call this custom and then I could add a bunch of scenes to this and then I can have collections of scenes. So maybe I have different kinds of live stream formats, different shows, and I want them to have their own collections of scenes. This is a good way to keep those organized. So I'm gonna go back to Untitled. That was the one that I set up here. And now that we have our scene set up, we can go ahead and start setting up the recording process. So now we're ready to start setting up the recording. I'm gonna go ahead and set the master levels for the audio, and that's down here in the middle of the bottom of the screen. And you can see I have a slider for my mic input, and as I talk, that little green meter is jumping around. You can see it moves more if I talk loudly, and it doesn't move very much if I talk quietly. Underneath that is the desktop audio, and that's your system sound, so that would be sound effects, music, 
your guests while they're speaking if you have them on Skype or Google Hangouts or something. So you may need to adjust their levels with the desktop audio. In my live streams, I don't use any desktop audio, so I usually just have this muted. That way I make sure that there aren't any unexpected sounds that happen during the live stream. My webcam has a microphone, so I wanna make sure that I don't pick up two microphones at the same time, otherwise I'm gonna get kind of an echo effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute the webcam microphone as well. And now the only sound that's gonna be captured during my live stream is my microphone, and that's the way I want it. Now you can click the little gear next to each of these, and you can add filters. You can click on a plus to add a filter, and you could select a noise gate if you wanna to try to trim off background noise. You can also go to edit and then advanced audio. And here you can boost the level of the audio as well. So I could go to the mic auxiliary and if I wanted to boost this by a small amount, I could do that. Let's turn it up. And then you can see in my little level meter there, as I'm turning it up and speaking, it's getting louder and louder each time. So I wanna turn this up a bit more. And so now my audio is at a much higher level. Let's turn it up to 1000 and see what happens. And now this green is going all the way to the edge and that's way too loud. That means my audio is getting clipped off. If I set it down to 500, it's still getting clipped. Maybe I'll set it down to 300. Now it's not getting clipped. But you have to keep in mind too, sometimes when you're talking, you might have an exclamation or something that might be louder than how you usually talk. So I'm probably gonna keep this maybe around 200 just to be safe. That way it's a little bit louder, but it's not too loud. We'll go ahead and close out of this. I'm gonna decide which scene I'm gonna start with. I think I'll start with the art stream scene. We can see a live preview of what our stream will look like now, but let's go ahead and do a test recording so that we can watch the test recording and make sure that it's coming out the way that we want it to. To do that, we can go down here to the bottom right and we can choose start recording. And whatever you say or do during the recording process is gonna get recorded. So what I'm saying right now is getting recorded. I'll click on stop recording. Whatever you say or do during the recording process is gonna get recorded, so. And that was the recording that I created. So that looked good to me. I didn't see any problems with that recording. That's a good indicator that the live stream will look good as well. If you did find that something was wrong, like your audio was too low or there was an echo or something, you would wanna go back and make changes as needed.